Hi, honeys. Welcome to Books and Halls with Michelle. I am here for my weekly reading vlog number three. Ah, three. That's exciting. Anyway, <laughs> are you excited? I'm excited. Why am I excited? I'm excited because Brad is coming home today. He's been gone for a week. Well, five days. That's a week, right? And I can't wait to go get him. I'm about to go to the airport to pick him up. I decided to go ahead and do a get ready with me just real quick while I talk to you about this book that I'm reading, which as you probably know from the last vlog is Girl A. <sighs> and if you're wondering about any of the products I'm using, just let me know down in the comments. I'm not... I'm not going to list them all because I don't think anybody really cares. I'm not like a makeup person or anything, but if you do, just let me know. Um, anyway, I just got out of the shower. That's why my hair is in this little, what do they call them? Turbies or something. I forgot in my last vlog to add something that was super important, or I thought it was anyway. It was me talking about abuse and how... When you've been abused, other people react to you. Um, and how difficult that can be at times. And I wanted you guys to see that. And I, I can't believe I just straight out forgot to add it, but I did. Which is really weird. So, I'm going to put that in right now. I won't do anything else to my face until you're back. But I just wanted you to see my initial reaction. This was actually after I read the very first 10 pages. I had this reaction. It was very genuine and like, I just thought it was really good. So I, you know, a good reaction. Wanted you to see it. Anyway, it's not really about the, about the, the critique of the writing or anything, but if you've ever been abused, which I have, um, there's something very fascinating about it to me. Not in a good way. Like, I hope nobody ever has to feel this feeling. But when you've been abused by someone, <laughs> there's this weird light of it that other people make. <laughs> and so this is not really giving anything away about the book because I just started it. But the main character goes to the prison uh, where her mother has just died. And everyone there is just... I've just noticed they're all kind of making light of what she went through. Now, I don't even know what she went through yet. But gosh, I just remember that feeling of, like, if you've, for somebody, going through abuse is kind of weird because if you've gone through it, other people who have gone through similar abuse, um, there's like this immediate bond and, oh, I totally understand, right? But people who haven't gone through the, the abuse, it feels like a judgment. And it feels like people make light of it. It feels like, oh, they didn't mean it that way. Just go ahead and forgive them and give them another chance. And it's like, no, you don't know what I went through. <laughs> like when you actually go through something like that and you have the strength and I don't, like I said, I don't know what you went through yet, but just abuse in general, doesn't matter what kind. You go through abuse and you have the strength to get away from it. If you're lucky enough to even be able to get away from it. I mean, sometimes depending on what kind of situation it is, people can't get away, especially if you're a child or you're elderly or depending on, you know, what the situation is. But there's nothing worse than going through abuse and finally getting the strength to walk out the door and then have people tell you that you were too hard on your abuser, that you should give them another chance. <laughs> that they've changed or whatever. Oh, that's the worst feeling. And so I'm already feel like I'm connected to this main character because I've gone through that feeling and she, you know, it's just, uh, hopefully none of you even know what I'm talking about. I hope I, I would never wish anybody to have to go through abuse, but the way people act about it when they haven't gone through it is really quite frightening and, rude <laughs> anyway i just had to sprinkle your your uh day with that little <laughs> tidbit of information but it's something that's always driven me nuts the way people act about it <sighs> okay 
I'm not saying you shouldn't forgive your abuser, but you, if you forgive your abuser, like I have forgiven mine, you forgive them for yourself, not for them. <laughs> and you certainly don't want to give them another chance. If somebody has it in them to hurt you once, they will keep hurting you, especially if you give them another chance. My gosh, that is a free pass to keep abusing you. I don't, I don't understand people that look at it so, you know, <laughs> people who are so cavalier about it. It's just like, what? So, okay, now that you have seen my reaction to people's reaction to those who have been abused, I can move on with the book. Um, I am now on page 260. And I have to get ready really quick. I have 10 minutes before I have to leave. The author jumps around a lot, a lot, a lot. And she, she kind of, basically each chapter is about someone else um, in the main character's life. And the main character is A. Her name is, I can't even remember her damn name. <laughs> Lex. Her name is Lex. Lex, each chapter of the book is basically someone in Lex's life, one of her siblings, you know, telling the story about this abuse, and then also other people throughout different points in her life. And it's like she's kind of going through life right now, and then also the past while she's telling you what's going on now. So it's very hard to follow. It bounces around a lot. It feels very neurotic. And it's hard to follow, but yet I, and I'm almost straight out not enjoying it. I've even thought a couple of times of putting it down. But I want to know what happens. And I want to know what already happened. So as far into the book as I am, I'm just now finding out about what abuse transpired. Also, they're saying that it's a, it says, it, at least when I decided to pick it from Book of the Month, it said it was a suspense novel. I don't know in what way it's suspenseful, but I'm not on the edge of my seat or anything. I mean, maybe in the sense that I don't want to put it down. Uh, well, I do want to put it down. <sighs> it's like I'm not interested in the book. I just want to know what's going to happen, though, because I do. <laughs> Super deep here on my part, right? Um, but that's, that's like literally all I have to say about the book at this point. I'm trying to think what else there is about it. I mean, it's just slow. If you're interested in abuse and like its psychological effects on people, that that part's interesting. And then the other part that's interesting is the different siblings react differently to all the abuse that they've gone through. And it's interesting because you've got a child who You've got the favorite child, which it seems like all parents have that, but definitely in abusive homes, there's usually the child who gets all the attention. And then you'll have the child who can't do anything right and so on and so forth. So it's interesting to see how these kids turn out years later. That's about it. I mean, it's just kind of a slow. I still don't know what the point in it all is, except for just letting us know about the abuse and its effects on her, I guess. is. But I'll tell you what, I have... I've got to lighten my load at this point. I have been reading some seriously depressing books, some very heavy books, and I need some joy and some lightness in my life. So I think 
um, my next book or two might be a little bit less depressing because I, I didn't, and I didn't realize, I guess I did. I knew this book was about abuse and its effects on us, but I don't know that I realized how depressing it was going to be. And it's super depressing. Like, it's just disturbing. Why we have to go through this kind of stuff, you know? It's just disturbing. The abuse that people can endure and that they have to endure. And you really don't even want them to have to endure that. But they do. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. But I don't even know if I would really recommend this book to people. Because it's just, it's quite the downer. Like I said, I went into it with my eyes open. I knew it was going to be a depressing book, but I just... Um... I like studying the after effects of abuse and, uh, you know, how different people lead productive lives after how people, you know, kind of move on and, and then some other people don't, um, what is the difference between them? Hopefully the next time I talk to you, I'll be done with the book and I'll be telling you my final reaction because, boy, I am I'm ready to be done with it. Like I said, it's really heavy and dark and depressing and I don't feel like feeling like that right now. So I guess we'll see what happens. It's now Wednesday. Brad and I had a good time last night. We ended up uh, getting some dinner on the way home and just having a really low-key night. Okay. Oh, There you go. Oh. Well, maybe she won't stay. <laughs> oh, here she is. Okay. I just finished Girl A. And that's why I have pillows on my lap. I like to have a couple pillows on my lap and then put the book, on, the book on it so that it's kind of a little bit higher up and I don't have to hold it up as much, you know. I find I end up with, like, wrist pain after a while. But we just finished Girl A. It never did get suspenseful for me. So I don't know why it said it was suspenseful. Oh, well, I digress. <laughs> Oh, hi. This is just a really sad story about child abuse. And I was wondering earlier why she kept talking about her childhood as if there was no abuse. And then all of a sudden, one day, abuse was going to happen. But I think, looking back on it, maybe her memory, in her memory, she was trying to make it better than it was. I think she was trying to figure out how to make some of her childhood enjoyable. But it's so sad because the kind of abuse that she ended up going through and her siblings was so severe that it's the kind that, you know, really affected her and them for the rest of their lives. Towards the end of the book, it really occurred to me There's just something in there. I don't want to give anything away, but there was something in there that was like, yeah, it's interesting to me how people that go through serious trauma as a child or even later in life, depending on what it is, but how people can like block things out or refuse to accept certain things. That's always been very fascinating to me. So it was interesting to read the story of girl A through girl A's eyes 
and to try to figure out what was true and what wasn't, what had really happened and what hadn't. A lot of people hated the ending of this book. I did not. I just didn't. <laughs> I, I felt like it moved the way it was supposed to move. It ended the way it was supposed to end. There were parts of it that were really moving. There was parts of it that were really sad. I didn't cry or anything, but just, it's just sad, you know, to think of what some people have to go through. Um, but it was so dark and depressing. I don't know that I, uh, it wasn't in a way that like touched me per se to where I feel like I need to read it again and um, think later on about what I learned from it or anything. So. I'm just kind of on the fence about what I think of it. So I read it. I didn't love it. I didn't hate it. It just was a book I read. <laughs> so you might be wondering what's next. Well, you know, I, I was looking back at February and then I was looking at March so far. And I've been a little hard on myself with all these dark, deep, heavy books. So I decided I'm going to go all out and just... Take it easy on myself. I'm going to read Sweet Valley Confidential. I'm going to lighten the load that has been on my shoulders for at least a month now with reading these dark, heavy books. I'm going to enjoy March more. Not that I didn't enjoy February. I mean, I, I have the ability to read dark books and still enjoy my life. But after a while, it gets to where it's like, okay, I need to, I need to go the other way here. So... If you haven't seen my videos where I've talked about this book, if you happen to read Sweet Valley Twins, Sweet Valley High, Sweet Valley SVU, any of those books, this is about those two twins 10 years after, I think it's after our graduation. Yeah, 10 years after graduation. And it's got the... It's got the same twins that we saw in all the covers here on the inside. And it's got this lovely little dramatic, yet slightly sinister photo on the back. You know, ooh, what's going on there? But um, the twins no longer talk. Elizabeth has moved away to New York City. And Jessica is still in the Valley with her family and her friends. Her life's just still kind of, I would assume, going the way it had been before and Elizabeth decides to return and they're no longer talking, which is shocking to me. I mean, it is, but it's not. If, if you know that relationship, they kind of loved to hate each other at times. Um, I can't wait to hear why they stopped talking. I also read in the um, synopsis that Elizabeth is out for revenge, which is not like Elizabeth. So, this will be interesting. What did Jessica do exactly? And I, I got to tell you, I want to read Sweet Valley High, yeah, Sweet Valley High blah, 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 all over again. And I've been looking for book number one. Uh, apparently it's a collector's item now and it's like $50 to buy it. So I'm just going to have to be on the lookout. I might not be able to start with book number one, but I have it in my head have it in my head that I'm going to be reading Sweet Valley High again. It's just something I need to revisit. It's it, to me it's like reading cozy mysteries. It's lighthearted, it's fun, it's a great palate cleanser because so many of the books I read are horror novels, mysteries, thrillers, psychological thrillers, historical fiction, all of which tend to be very sad and heavy and um, or, or classics even. And I, I, I need good palate cleansing books for in between a lot of them. So I'm definitely going to be going down the Sweet Valley High road again. And I'm excited. I think that that's going to be such a fun adventure to revisit as an adult and see what I think of these stories. <laughs> so I cannot wait to get started with this book, though. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I cannot wait. I love the Wakefield twins. They are just, they're a huge part of my life. <laughs> I 
As you can see, I've taken another shower. Yep, I should shower regularly. And <laughs> I am uh, going to get my makeup done and I'm going to film my festive Friday video. It's Thursday today. I've decided to start filming festive Fridays on Thursdays because I felt like last month, which was the first time I did it, it was a little bit hard to just sit and relax and enjoy dinner when I had to go edit it and post it as soon as possible after. So that's why I wanted to do it this way. You're not going to believe this. I am 52 pages into this book and I'm going to stop reading it. I'm DNFing it, AKA do not finish, did not finish. It's awful. <laughs> You know, I I spent years of my life reading Francine Pascal books. I mean, I probably, if you actually add up the amount of time I spent reading and rereading her books, I might have actually spent an entire year of my life reading Francine Pascal. That's how much I've read it or read her books. And I know these characters. I know them in and out. I know the twins. I know their friends. I know their boyfriends. I know their parents and their brother and I don't know who these characters are but they're not the ones that I've read about it's they're not the characters I read about in junior high and then high school and then college these are different people and it's just very disappointing I know I know I know people grow and they change and they learn things as they age but not this much like I think at our heart we're still the same people and the things that both twins are doing and the way they're both acting, it's just not who they are. And even Todd, Todd Wilkins, you know who that is if you read those books, he's not acting like himself. And then she throws this, I don't want to ruin anything, but she throws this weird spin onto something that has you thinking, wow. So the whole time I was reading about a certain thing, it wasn't true. What? So I was reading some reviews on this because I thought, is it just me? And it turns out the reviews are very low on this book and a lot of people did not finish it. And somebody worded it in a way that was so eloquent, I have to tell you. She said that now she understands why so many people who are in love with the Star Wars series got upset with George Lucas when they they read or watched episode one and i feel that way too right now like okay uh, you know what yes now i understand it's almost that feeling when you read a book and then you go to watch the show or the movie that's been made about it and it's nothing like the book and you're thinking what like i felt that way with nosferatu it was like what do they do to my characters that i love so much <laughs> who are these people like, they don't look the way they looked in the book. They don't act the way they acted in the book. Why do they take out all these different scenes and skip all the way through this? And it was, for me, it was a nightmare watching that show. And I only watched, I think it was one or two episodes. And I was like, I hate this. I'm done. <laughs> That's how I felt with this book. So I wish Francine Pascal had just stopped where she did and not written this book as well. Because why did you write it <laughs> and why did you write it this way why did you change people this much I bought it for enjoyment and all I felt was disappointment but it's not a total loss the reason it's not a total loss is it's reignited my passion for this series and it's reignited my want to reread the whole thing over again It'll take a long time to find those books, though, because I've been looking for them online and a lot of them are really overpriced. <laughs> They're collector's items now, so it's going to take a while for me to find them. But eventually I'll find them and I can start reading them. So now I'm reading this, which you didn't even know that I got. This is, uh, you guys have heard by now that I'm doing a book about or a video about books that were a big part of my childhood. And this book, I'll talk more about it in the review, but it was a really big part of my childhood. 
and I wanted to read it before I do the video about childhood books. I've reread all the ones that I'm going to mention, um, but this one I haven't, so that's why I'm starting it now so I can finish it before I film the video. This is A Ring of Endless Light by Madeline Langle. Have you read this? I want to know. Or have you read any of her books? She's the lady that wrote A Wrinkle in Time, which a lot of you might be familiar with. I know one of my brothers really liked A Wrinkle in Time, but this one for me was the book that changed everything for me growing up. And I'm trying to remember why, and now I will be able to remember why when I read it. Well, today is Saturday. A Ring of Endless Light. You guys, I am loving this book. I'm only 40 pages in, but I'm already, it's like everything I read, it's reminding me of stuff I read years ago. And just, I don't know if you've read the book, but this is not a spoiler at all. So they're staying at her grandfather's house for the summer. He's sick. They're worried he might pass away and they're trying to take care of him. He lives in an old horse stable barn thing that's been converted into a home. So there's all these different stables, the horse, you know, stables that have been converted into libraries. Like each one is like a different room of a library. And then up in the loft, that's where his bedroom is. It's just crazy trying to picture this place. And I remember as a kid, I, because you know, I'm a book lover, right? That's why we're here right now talking on a book vlog. <laughs> I went nuts as a kid trying to imagine if I had a big horse stable like that, that I converted into a home, what would my little library stalls be? And what would I do with the other rooms and how would I decorate it? And I just had so much fun trying to figure out how I would put it together. And uh, so it's just been kind of a neat memory. I even said to Brad last night, should we, instead of buying a house, should we buy like a barn or a stable and just you know, like a prefab one and make it into a home. And he's like, no, I don't think you'd actually enjoy living in that. And I'm like, you're probably right. But it sounds so sexy, doesn't it? Like not sexually, but like sexy, exciting. Like it sounds great. <laughs> anyway. So the book is. It's, you know, the still introduction time. I think it's over 300 pages. So 40 pages in, that's nowhere near into the storyline by any means. But I'm just loving this book so far. It's so great to return to something that we once to love, isn't it? It's Sunday night. I'm not that far into the book. I'm on page 80. <laughs> I was hoping to be done by today, but you know, sometimes I just don't read. Sometimes I get busy with other things and um, I don't have as much of a chance to read as I want. And unfortunately, this weekend was one of those weekends where I was just active a lot. Um, I've been feeling a lot better. Now that we figured out what kind of anemia I have and it's been being treated, I'm getting more energy. I'm not saying I'm like energetic all the time, but I'm feeling better some of the time. And I just want to, hi, I just want to get things done. I, sorry, I can't, I just can't film without him getting involved. <laughs> he always wants to be on the, the book videos lately. Hopefully before I go to bed tonight, I'll get a bunch of reading done. We'll see what happens. One thing that I have really kind of noticed since the last time I checked in is how close the main character, Vicky, is with her grandparents. And I could definitely relate to that. I was always really close with my mom's parents. And so I, that might have been one of the things that I really identified with in the book as a child. I mean, when I say a child, a child, I was 12, so preteen, <laughs> but all right. I hope that you guys enjoyed this vlog. I hope that you have a wonderful 
rest of your week. And I will be back next Monday with, <laughs> with another uh, reading vlog. And I hope you guys are enjoying these. I mentioned before, I'm really new to them, so I'm still a little rusty on how to do them. But I'm working on it. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Bye.